at you. Okay. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm getting all picky about it. It's not like, you know. All right. Um, so he, uh, uh, on watching it, I think this is probably like my seventh or eighth time watching it. Mm-hmm. And um, I think my, so my biggest, my biggest issue with it is that, so in the first act. Um, Hold on the, a second. Hi, everyone. Yeah. We just have to finish this conversation about Star Trek before we, we talk to you. Yeah, we're yeah, talking about did... <laughs> Star, Trek, Star Trek Into Darkness. Is... It's a conversation already in progress. I really tried to stop him, but what was I thinking? All right, yeah, no, no, finish, finish up, finish up. Uh, this is, if, for those of you joining, this is a continuation sort of of a different conversation that we had on our Gen Con stream. So it is yeah. at least kind of relevant. True, true. And um, many people have transcripts of that discussion and so they're no doubt connecting the two <laughs> correct um also if you <laughs> enjoy this conversation breath. uh please go check out our friends at modifius and their game star trek adventures which we don't publish um anyway mm-hmm. so my, my biggest issue with it is like that the the transporter thing being able to to beam across the galaxy or whatever instantaneously obviously flawed um, but my biggest issue with it is that in, in the first act, um, Starfleet convenes and they take the Enterprise away from Kirk. And mm-hmm. it means nothing um, because it, it's resolved like a scene later um, yeah. where, where when Khan attacks the, um, the meeting room or whatever. Well, isn't that J.J. Abrams, though? Like, it's just, and then the next thing happens. Wait, but what? No, shut up. Now we're on a new thing, and there's an answer. Speaking of shut up, I want to let everybody know that you're tuning. No, you don't have to shut up yet. I'm just uh, intimating that, uh, hey, everybody, uh, I see folks are lining in. Jay Gray, you are literally my Link hero. Uh, Link Wizard is your official title. I think we're going to get T-shirts made of that. This Mm -hmm. is the Green Ronin stream. We are talking Sword Chronicles. It's Warfare Wednesday. Thank you for the alliteration wheel. I appreciated that. This is Troy. I'm your disembodied voice. You see uh, Malcolm, and then you see <laughs> Will, and we're talking Sword Chronicles stuff. So as we get more people loading in, you can hear sort of the tail end of our discussion about, what was it? Uh, Star, uh, Star Trek Star- Into Darkness. Star Trek. Yeah, but we can, but we can talk about sword chronicle now well, we yes. want to give people we, we are running just a smidge late um oh. as as is our way um we prefer it uh that way uh, better late than never and uh so we'll let people load in and you two can can finish your oh, rivalry right. well, I mean, um, if ever so here's another thing that i don't like about it and this one is maybe a little bit m- minor but the ending is super abrupt like super super abrupt mm-hmm. um like uh and they cured death right correct they cured death <laughs> hey, who was uh who was con was that uh benedict cumberbatch Blomberdeen, yeah. clamberdeen clamberdeen bumberbum yes um yeah so there's this like five minute sequence right where uh spock beams down to earth to fight con and Ahura beams down to save him because he's getting his ass kicked. Mm-hmm. And then they capture Khan and then the movie's over. And uh, all of that happens within like five minutes. And they're like, there are so many things that like, there's no actual resolution. They're just like, Kirk wakes up from death and, and, and then we're done. There's like a 30 second scene after they beat up Khan and it's, Kirk wakes up from death. Movie over. Here's here's the epitome of that movie. It's when they contact old Spock, and old Spock says, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's the guy from Wrath of Khan. It's a great movie. You should totally watch that and figure out what's going on." <laughs> All see, right. I, so like, when, all but says that. When our I, audience I, is a net negative now, um, I, <laughs> I suppose we should probably. Uh, Will, I'll let you have the final word on uh, Shaka Khan. Okay. Yeah. I I was just gonna say. I think I love that. <laughs> what a perfect note to end that on um all right so i know everybody's come here for some juice some meat some some hot goss on the um <laughs> on the sword chronicle um we've got all the um all the details and all the information you never want to know if you've got questions drop them in the chat i will uh, uh endeavor to get them to uh to into the discussion and if we don't know the answer we will make up something fun 
And um, with that, Will, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of dive in and just explain what all of this is even about. Sure. Uh, super thanks. So um, before we get started on that, we have another super important thing that we have neglected to mention today. And it's that we have a Discord server um, that is the Green Ronin age appropriate Discord. Um, or and grad. Today, the grad. today is their one year anniversary. <gasps> oh, wow. You know that? Did I, you know that, that we've I, been on Discord for a year? That is something. Um, so the now they've been on there, it's a year now, huh? Mm, yes. Yeah. So um, Foxfire, Foxfire is amazing. Foxfire, our, our friend Foxfire, um, who is in charge of this server, um, does incredible, incredible work. Um, and along with her, there's like uh, two other mods or something like that. Um, Literally. Well, I mean, yeah, they're in, the, in a whole community of folks, the best mods I've ever worked with as a community person. And they're yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah it, they, they've been great. Um, I'm really, I'm really happy with how proactive that community is. Yeah, with coming yeah. out with stuff, with talking about their play experience and, and things like that. Um, and uh, and you know, it, it just uh, it's very motivating to see some of the stuff they're doing with our stuff. And of course. It's amazing that they get out the word whim, new things out, and uh... yeah, just super pro as well mm -hmm. as well as being proactive. Uh, a delight to work with. Um, so organized, so on the ball. Um, it's more very, organized than we are sometimes. It's very helpful. We're we're chasing a million things, and they're chasing two million things, and they end up uh, still on top. Um, that's it's a great group. Uh, I know for a fact that our friend Jay Gray is going to end up dropping. Up. Yep. Oh, he did. I, he did already. Yep. Yep. You're not supposed to look at the chat. <clears throat> oh. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Jay Gray. Uh, join up. Say hey. Um, uh, make friends. And uh, and we're all hanging out there, too. Uh, but do not yeah. bother us. Yeah, you uh, you can bother us a little. You can bother uh, Will and I, but you know, our devs are up to their eyeballs yeah. in development. Correct. Yeah. Feel free to bother me. Tag me. Um, I see things like 80% of the time. Uh, it's a pretty big Discord. It's pretty busy. Um, and I have a lot of things and a lot of not notifications. And right now I'm trying to run a Kickstarter I, and uh, talk about Sword Chronicle as well. So um, tag me, but no guarantees that I'll see it. Um, so congratulations. Uh, jump into the Discord um, if you want. Uh, Foxfire has said, stay tuned tomorrow for a special event type thing to celebrate their one year anniversary. Um, I assure you, it's a very cool, uh, special event type thing. <laughs> it, it is? It is. It is. It's a thing you know about, and it's a thing I know about. I don't know about it. You don't know, but you're going to like it. Does it have to do with the person that we love? Uh, it has to do with the topic of today's conversation, well, uh, which I'm, I'm actually going to. Yeah, uh, are we getting to that? Yeah, I'm I, starting to feel like a third wheel here. I want to thank not... all the 20 people who are uh, <laughs> who are checking out the stream. I want to remind you to drop questions as you have them in the chat. I will uh, endeavor to interrupt and and mm -hmm. um, share that. And uh, with that, ta-da, ta-da. Uh, let's talk about Sword Chronicle. Yeah. All right. In this Warfare Wednesday. Um, it's me, DJ Will, uh, Warfare Will. Yes. Um, so Malcolm, mm, let's talk yes. about Sword Chronicle and let's start, um, by talking about the Chronicle system in general and how, how we got here. All right. So, uh, of course, um, as virtually everybody tuning in would know, um, uh, we, Green Ronin, that is, uh, Ronin produced the uh, Song of Ice and Fire role-playing game for a number of years, and it was quite successful. Uh, and people got um, very attached to the system. And not only were they using it for 
uh, games in that setting. Uh, they were using it for original fantasy games, and there was a significant demand for that. So in addition to um, supporting Song of Ice and Fire, we started to do things that weren't connected uh, to the Westeros setting, but were compatible with the Song of Ice and Fire RPG, which used the Chronicle system, right? And then our license uh, with, um, with George R. R. Martin um, concluded. And so here we were with a system that was pretty popular um, and that people were using for more than just the license um, that uh, we had situated it with. Um, but of course we didn't have a core book um, for it anymore. Um, and then of course, there was a pandemic and <laughs> that caused us to rethink a whole bunch of our projects. Um, some things had to be moved forward. Um, some things had to be split up. I know in my case, I also developed Modern Age. Uh, we had uh, an adventure book for our threefold setting um, that we have, you know, it's still gonna come out as a book, um, but we're doing it as a serialized adventure electronically. So, um, but you know, um, people need to eat um, <laughs> and, and I like companies, eating. Yeah, and companies need to publish. So but we we're looking at other things we could do that were not too taxing. And it occurred to me um, to sort of bring up this situation where we have this popular system because we we're seeing things like uh, streams, actual plays, uh, communities developing around Chronicle. But of course, we had no Chronicle core to just sell to, anymore. That, that community... Just to highlight this real quick, like there are so many live streams, actual plays um, that use Chronicle system. Mm -hmm. um, like we kept seeing on our social media, particularly on Twitter, um, there's the Encounter Roleplay group um, mm -hmm. and they have a really popular Song of Ice and Fire actual play yeah. called After the Fire. Um, mm -hmm. after, and that's fire with a Y. And it's, um, it's an incredible stream and it has such a passionate following. Um, and they, they're like, all the players are super passionate and this story that they've been telling has been going on for a while mm -hmm. now. You'll find information about the, after the fire folks on, um, the, fandom.com they've got an extensive wiki there um for sure uh, i have a, a quick question uh, lay out for folks like brand new they don't even they don't know anything about this what is the mechanic what's the core sort of system that you, that we're talking uh, about? the core mechanic is that you have a set of six-sided dice um and you roll them and add them to meet or beat a target number um however um, because we're game designers and we like to overcomplicate things, um, <laughs> there are convolutions to that. I'm just kidding. Um, generally, when you gain an advantage of some sort with your dice, uh, you get bonus dice, but you don't add them to your total pool. What you do is you take the, uh, you add those two dice, you roll them, and then you have the, you take the best set of dice. Um, that fit you the the ability you're using. So if I have an ability of four, but I have something that I'm especially good at, a specialty with two dice, um, then I'll roll six dice and I'll add the top four. Right. So it's a roll and keep mechanic. Is, it's a roll and keep mechanic. Is 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 kind of the like core of it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of convolutions on top of that. Um, so that's, that's the core mechanic. Um, the distinctive thing about Chronicle otherwise is just the fact that it has um, these arenas of play that go through um, intrigue, intrigue combat warfare, right? And other stuff too, but, uh, but that's Stored Chronicle's focus. Right. Um, is that you, your actions extend beyond the individual. Um. 
so Sword Chronicle uh, being born out of the fact that we saw a Chronicle system being played and used and talked about mm-hmm. online um, and that we didn't have Song of Ice and Fire anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of another thing that made us pay attention, pay more attention to Chronicle system was that last year at Gen Con, we announced uh, that we had acquired the fifth season uh, license, right. um, uh, which is uh, a trilogy, a science fiction fantasy trilogy, a science fantasy trilogy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's everything. It's post-apocalyptic fantasy. And uh, it's a trilogy by an amazing uh, woman named N- uh, N.K. Jemison. Uh, and, uh, the fifth season is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. And, uh, sort of one of the things that we had talked about was that this is an amazing setting that we could use with the Chronicle system. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that we started realizing was that we had never done, you know, a thing like what Malcolm is talking about, of just a core rules of the chronicle system um that is setting list that is ip list um while also giving it like a small facelift yeah um, like I, I i hate to say like it, i i don't like saying that it is a new addition or anything and well, kind of what i've been telling people is that it's just a quality of life improvement right well like, yeah let me let me address this head on so um essentially the fact of the matter is, that first of all, we wanted um, we wanted there to be a Chronicle Fantasy core out there, right? Yeah. Um, because people are playing the game. Uh, people are looking at streams. Um, people are engaging with this system. And, you know, we want to give them a book. And we want that book to be meaningful for them. So it has to have a measure of compatibility with everything that's come before. Right. The other thing, too, is that we have, of course, a whole bunch of settingless supplements for the Chronicle system, and those existed before Sword Chronicle, uh, and I thought it was important to maintain compatibility with all of those, and, uh, and they pretty much maintain 100% compatibility, so that was one of the things. If we made this game, it already comes with support, Right. Like it comes with a threats and terror series, so there are creatures. If you want to get more creatures, yeah. Um, you know there are rules for firearms. Um, you know there are expanded rules for uh, a couple of different aspects in the system, right? So we wanted those to still be attractive to people, right? The only thing um, that was really overridden from the setting neutral. Um, prior chronicle stuff was the sorcery system and the sorcery system is still the sorcery system in chronicle of sorcery in the supplement um, is still compatible with sword chronicle but sword chronicle has a streamlined um, version of that system yeah that is conceptually the same so Um, uh, Malcolm we have a quick question I want to toss in here and and uh, if we're getting towards the spot for those of you who are just tuning in you can feel free to drop a question about uh, Sword Chronicle and the Chronicle system Um, we have uh, Malcolm designer we have Will who is our uh, Will I was trying to think of a a, um, I mean marketing just doesn't really do you justice Um, so my my official my official title is like a mouthful it's director of sales, marketing, and licensing. Um, you can call me DJ Willigus. Uh, I'm I just going to call you a mouthful. Oh, wait, that's not appropriate. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, here's a question that I have for you, uh, Malcolm. Actually, uh, this is from Jay Gray. Uh, Jay says, actually, I do have a question. Did you think about creating a house sheet? Because I can't help but feel that it is needed. Do you want to elaborate on that part of well, the uh, system? Um well, our main priority was getting it out in a reasonable amount of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, certainly oh, I, I think a house sheet is a great idea. Um, and it is something that uh, I'm certainly willing uh, to pass on because uh, things like character sheets um, are generally a production side thing with us. Yeah. Right. 
Um, and that includes house sheets and other play aids, right? Um, mostly because uh, I can't use layout software to save my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, usually when I have to send something visual, I, I draw it on graph paper. Yeah. So, um, same. Yeah. So, so that's why, uh, that's why there's no house sheet and yes, a house, house sheet would be a good idea. And I am going to send a message about it right now. You'll see me working live. See, this is exactly exact, as Jay, interesting as you thought it was. Jay, you know you've asked the right question when you have the developer making a note on their to-do list, on their digital to-do list. So well done. <laughs> um, so um, let's talk about um, the gill, which yeah. is kind of a, a big deal um, for the release of sword chronicle um and i think uh so how how many do you know how many guild releases we had at launch uh two days ago three days ago oh gosh was it 10 or we or had we... nine yeah and then a tenth was put up that day okay so, so I, I am pretty pleased with that and i'd like to thank um thank all the c participants in the guild for uh for getting it done um a great crew a, just top to bottom for sure they're just wonderful people. yeah yeah um so so for those of you who don't know um when we when we dropped sword chronicle a couple days ago um it launched with a community content program called the sword chronicle guild and um you can find that on drive through rpg um you can find um, w there's a bunch of stuff there, uh, a bunch of PDFs that you can find from um, awesome community creators. Um, and on top of that, you can find um, rules and guidelines and uh, information right about how uh, that's going to work going forward. Yeah, yeah. Let me, uh, I'm going to just jump in real quick. Um, yeah. Uh, Malcolm and I were able to work together. I was actually able to kind of see Malcolm at work. I'm getting some feedback. Uh, but working with Malcolm, it was, uh, we were able to recruit some folks. They were able to kind of create some um, uh, content based on the rules and some of the things that we had put, uh, put in place. It was really awesome to see. These are super pro, uh, pro level designers and developers uh, putting together this stuff and looking to the rules and sort of the, the parameters that we put together. Um, Malcolm, uh, you know, continues the, uh, as a as a guide and, and sort of a voice from afar, but I'm there to help you out. Sorry, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, if you're interested in that, we'll drop a, uh, a, a link. We've got a, a special Discord channel uh, devoted to that kind of stuff with people who have done the work and have been there. Uh, the community is interacting and connecting with each other, coaching and sharing assets. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been, it's been really great to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I guess one thing, I just want to continue the whole thing with like how, you know, what some of the design considerations were, right? So there's that continuity of design, right? Um, so yes, a lot of the stuff that you see in the book is going to be familiar in Sword Chronicle. Um, however, there were a couple of things that, uh, well, the change that everybody talks about is the fact that we removed the armor penalty for combat defense, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Because that created a whole thing where the thing is, is because you, the damage you do is a multiplier based on how well you succeed um something that um makes you easier to hit uh, also makes you easier to damage more profoundly so for that reason what happened with armor penalty is that um is that it actually made you easier to damage provided that you hit right to an extent that sort of outperformed the actual damage absorption ability you got from the armor right so yeah, yeah we mulled over i talked to um to joe character about it a little and we mulled over different ways of approaching this and um we i asked well why don't we just get rid of that 
um, and Joe raised a few considerations and, uh, and I incorporated them. So we got rid of that. The, the penalty still applies to um, agility based tests because um, that just makes sense. Be because it makes, well, um, as some of you may know, um, I used to wear <laughs> armor for a living because I worked as a reenactor. Um, and I got in sword fights with people. Um, and yes, armor does for not a living. make you. Yes, for a living. Um, <laughs> um, but yes, armor does not make it harder for you to defend yourself. But but you don't. You're just not. You're certainly not as quick on your feet because it's heavy. Um, and that actually interacts with a couple of things in the system. Um, like you know, you're not going to. You probably don't want to use the dodge action right if you're if you're in heavy play right because the dodge action is agility based right the other considerations were you know um there were some concerns that you know you can be this fencer and then you put on this huge suit of armor um but you're still dainty um with your sword um so we just um we added a couple of minor adjustments to the the benefits related to that to make sure that wouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, so that's, I guess that's the, you know, that is the thing that everybody talks about when they talk about uh, their less than ideal encounters with with Chronicle. Um, so I wanted to, to get that off the, uh, we're off yeah. of that. Now, uh, you know, the other things too were, um, you know, we, uh, we rewrote Intrigue. Um, systemically, it's not much different. Um, however, you know, it's 2020, um, and we do want a more robust, safe way to do social influence, um, than, you know, than was originally conceived. Um, so there are a couple of extra options for that, right? So someone can't really make you do something terrible. Yeah. Um, however, there is still support for someone making worth your while to do something terrible <laughs> because, well, I mean, it's, it's always one of the things, right. Is that, uh, is that sword chronicle because of its origins and because of its subject matter, right? Like it's not about nice people. It can be about nice people, but there's sort of a default tone of political opportunism. Um, right that expresses itself through intrigue, that expresses itself through warfare, that even expresses itself through individual violence, right? Because, you know, you can be taken and held hostage. Um, you can be given a scar, right? So the idea is that is having those connections um, between the different parts of the system that go toward these character goals that can be virtuous, but don't, don't necessarily have to be. Yeah, I think uh, the the point there to circle back to like that these are not nice people is like this system was originally intended for Song of Ice and Fire, right? Like that was the that was the that was the idea is that these are Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones people talking about and doing terrible things. It's in the um, DNA, yeah. Right. And so it's super tied to that. And so I think adjusting that for this um, helps separate it out. But to, and then to circle back to what you were originally saying um, at the beginning of this is that we do still want it to be compatible, right? Like we yeah. still want it to be um, integratable to all the Song of Ice and Fire books or PDFs or whatever mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah. Um, so. Cool. I find I find that maneuvering around that and making sure that you are designing and not designing out or creating walls or barriers for people who are used to that system and using it in other ways. Um, that's pretty fascinating. Sorry, I might mm -hmm. that just jumped literally on my cord, so I have no idea mm -hmm. if you can hear me, but no. I'm going to pretend that I you can, can, and I'm going to no, say, Jake asks, um, for house creation, was it? possibly out of scope for creating new rules for realm stats, um, changing starting uh, resources. Can you speak to that? Um, 
Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was, I wanted to make sure that it, it remained comparable to previous stuff. Um, there are some changes because, you know, there's no particular geography, right? Whereas in Song of Ice and Fire, um, the house stuff was was very connected to that setting geography. Yeah. Um, I know that there is some demand for some additional features for houses. Um, and, you know, that speaks to sort of where we're going with it. And basically, what is going to happen with the future of Sword Chronicle depends on how well it is received. Um, and <laughs> good so marketing talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're three days uh, into uh, after the release, and we're still holding strong. We're, it. we're still number one best selling on Drive Through RPG. Yeah. So thank you for to everybody three, who's three days mm -hmm. after. Um, so we do have we do have a vault of stuff, um, some of which includes house material that we've been going over. Um, some of it is some experimental design. Uh, some of it ha was for uh, unreleased products. But uh, we're not exactly sure what we're going to do with it at, yeah. this, at this time. One thing I wanted to do real quick is, uh, though, is I will use your phrase, is to circle back. And Ooh. well, and okay, so one of the things <laughs> I want to do is, um, is fifth season, um, doesn't have the same design goals as Sword Chronicle, right? It doesn't need that. It, it's, you know, it's not maintaining that continuity. Um, so what's happening with Fifth Season's implementation of Chronicle is going to be a little, is going to be different from the guts up in, in a more significant way. Um, I've looked yeah. at some, some preliminary design documents and they're really interesting. And I really wish I could, go on and on about them because uh because steve and joe are so smart um and talking about them makes me seem smart <laughs> uh, yeah i, I so. think i think you bring up a good point and i think that it's important uh to clarify here um that while sword chronicle was sort of a uh a, a surgical polishing of an existing thing in existing uh system in an existing book uh fifth season was uh when when joe started working on this um it was definitely more of a uh rebuilding right i think that's the word you used earlier mm -hmm. um yeah. of like it is it's more of a from the ground up sort of thing where each different mechanism um was sort of questioned of that belonged in song of ice and fire but it may not necessarily belong in fifth season mm -hmm. yeah and there are there are some core rule stuff like very very fundamental things that are kind of being looked at it's actually like one of the cool things about having sword chronicle and being able to talk chronicle again is that you know there's so much stuff that has been done for the chronicle system and you haven't you the audience have not seen all of it um uh there are some ideas that we have um you know there are a couple of different directions uh that we could go in and i think there's a, and there's so much potential to it um for sword chronicle for fifth season um and and maybe even some other stuff that uh that i'm kind of excited to to get it back in the conversation mm -hmm. um so and also you know one of the neat things about about returning to a system that has been around for a while is um is re-examining some things and sort of looking at them and mentally comparing the state of design back then to now um right because right, i was only a few years in um as a as a designer developer writer person um when the original came out um so it's really interesting to go back to it now um now that i've had uh, 20 years in the field and um and see how some of the stuff works um and that has influenced, um, you know, a couple of things like intrigue, for example, right? We sort of, we have, um, 
different safety and conduct standards perhaps yeah, yeah. Than, than used to exist. And so the intrigue rules have been tweaked to reflect that. And the other thing too is, you know, just this year, um, but certainly before that too, but this year it's been especially emphasized is the, the conversation about character origins and the politics of character origins in role-playing games. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's been, there have been some, uh, there's been some great work done on that. Um, I would like to mention um, uh, James Mendez Hodes. Uh, I'm so sorry if I massacred his last name. Um, but he wrote this series of articles on orcs and about the cultural origin of orcs, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that was, you know, one of the most important set of things to go out into the, the culture um, in, in, in the past year. And it aligned with my feelings. So it directly, you know, it directly influenced, you know, how we ended up doing fantasy peoples in Sword Chronicle, because that was something, of course, you know, um, that you don't really have in Song of Ice and Fire. Um, except they're for all human, right? Except for the little people who left the trees with the things. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell I'm just whip smart here. Because if I'm, I was not in an interview, I would know this off the top of my head. I also know about Song of Ice and Fire. And I think that the name... You know, it left the faces on the tree. Tree face people. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> yeah. children something. something All children. right, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure everybody knows what I mean and is groaning. So... <laughs> um, so basically the approach we took um, is to grade it into the uh, quality system, right? And that has a number of advantages. Um, the first is that you can get rid of essentialist conceptions of, you know, what a fantastical origin is like, right? So, you know, we don't have to have a special stat line for half elves because it's so special when an elf and a person have a kid that we have to do a entirely separate design thing for them, right? And we also do things like, you know, we, it normalizes diverse ancestry. Um, and it allows very fine tuned control um, of, of how you wanna portray someone who is an elf or an ogre. It's elves, ogres, and dwarves in Sword Chronicle and the Kurgalon, if you do using Shattered Hair. Um, and, uh, and really, you know, that was the output of, you know, both the conversations that have been having, that people have been having lately um, about what we do with fantasy peoples. Um, and more you know, specifically, just making sure that we're creating games where people can enjoy and and not have to reflect on any sort of divisive cultural or societal weirdnesses right well yeah or they can people can do what they want at their tables yeah. as long as they're not hurting anybody else bingo but... I, I i think what troy was trying to say mm -hmm. is that they can consume that or um take view those and dissect those things by their table's merits yeah uh, right like and i think that this kind of also leans into what you were talking about of like changing the intrigue thing is that there are conversations and tools that are happening now that uh have been happening for a long time um but have evolved design culture mm -hmm. in a way that affects us and affects every of our players mm -hmm. and affects our community. Um, and like, I, I think just to throw it out there, one of my favorite tools uh, in that like uh, artillery is um, this sheet. And I, I think I saw it, I think it was um, in the Monty Cook uh, article that they wrote on their blog about different tools. Um, and it's a sheet that the, the game master hands out to each of the players before 
their first session, um, like during char- character creation, and um, the sheet is just like topics that, uh, and you just list topics of this is what I'm comfortable with, and this is like uh, towing the line, and these are topics that I'm uncomfortable talking about, and it's it's just such a clean way to communicate those kinds of table needs. Absolutely. Right. That, uh, that consent and, and having the dialogue is, is super critical. And I, it's a nice to see that evolution. Um, you it, can get, yeah. yeah, it doesn't restrict it. Uh, you are mindfully kind of taking into account what goes on there and agreeing to, you know, what you're going to be playing. I think that's really right. smart. Right. Yeah. Oh no, completely. And I think that that goes along with like one of my guiding rules as a game master is always, um, when when my players hand me their character sheet um they're not just saying this is who my character is they're not just saying um this is uh you know what my character does um they're um like when when i'm looking at age their focuses um and they're like looking at their high uh scores and stuff like that it's a roadmap for me um, of this is what my players want to see in the game. Uh, so like if I have a bunch of characters who have really high communication, um, that lets me know that they want to see those kinds of uh, talking social encounters um, and stuff like that. And I think the same is true for this sheet that I'm talking about. Um, where it is a it's a roadmap. It helps me build the story and the setting that they want to participate in. Absolutely, right? Jay, Jay Gray is going to share the link to. Um, it's a free resource um, available on uh, uh, Monty Cook Games. Um, Thank slash you. Consent dash in dash gaming, but we'll provide the link. Uh, a yes. phenomenal resource, and just like you say, I mean, it's not about restricting or. Uh, you know, sort of excising anything that is controversial. Rather, it's understanding that you can still have flirty, romance, you know, tension, exactly. all that kind of stuff without being offensive. Hey, I want to jump into a question uh, real quick. Let's um, do Adam, it. Adam Forrest says, um, could you talk about how historical and thematic research fits into your design process? You talked a bit about the fact that you okay. walk around your daily life in armor. Um, uh, Adam <laughs> continues. <laughs> daily life. I got a helmet. Here, I'll show you my helmet. I'll be right Would, back. Yeah, yeah. I'll. Uh... <laughs> you, you asked for it, Adam. Um, I'm not I sure. Wanna, I want to give a shout out to another Adam, Adam Anderson, who is in oh. the comments right now. Uh, Adam Anderson. Uh, is my uh, childhood friend. S- how how heavy is I that? I have to turn my, I think I turn have to turn background, my background off. off. Hold on. Yeah. They're going to see you full of chaise. Yeah, they're, they are. They uh, are. I'm going to finish the question. So we have, uh, for example, the feudal aspect of Sword Chronicle. Did the history of actual feudal times influence your design and how as he dons his armored well, I'm not going to put the helmet on. Jeez. Oh, come oh, on. Put it on. Put it on. Oh, all right. It's it's actually an enormous pain in the ass to put. Hold on. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know. It, because it's a helmet. Anyway, this <laughs> is my friend. This is my friend, a 14th century um, bassinet. It's uh, the style known as a clap visor. The strap isn't historical. And this is a little overbuilt because we know that concussions exist now in ah but yeah that that's where your head goes that's where your and whenever goes. i have friends coming over i have to tell them <laughs> not to try and put it on because unlike hats helmets don't stretch so if so you, you get kinda stuck it's bad your, ah. you gotta squish your head into the yeah. helmet area and... so to answer that question though um yes history did uh was a part of it but in a kind of roundabout way because here's the weird thing about uh, how RPGs handle history. Um, essentially, the uh, game-focused conception of the medieval period is heavily influenced by Dungeons and & Dragons. And Dungeons and & Dragons came out in the 1970s. And in the 1970s, there was no internet. Um, and people looked through physical books, um, which they couldn't always reliably get for information. So there was um, 
one of the curators of the Royal Armory, uh, Charles Folks, uh, produced a book called Weapons and Armor. And the classifications for arms and armor used in that book were what was used for Dungeons and Dragons. Now, consequently, every game since has looked back to that, right? And has said, well, you know, a longsword here is a one-handed weapon um, that has a double-edged blade and so on and so forth and blah, blah, blah. So uh, basically we are in many cases when we're looking at, um, at things like arms and armor, uh, we are looking at an iteration of something developed in the 70s based on a book that was produced in 1906. Mm. And since mm. then, um, our ideas about a whole bunch of things, but, um, and I'm gonna get past weapons and armor in a second, <laughs> uh, but a bunch, of our, a bunch of our ideas about these things have changed. Um, so I have a long sword just over here. <laughs> so this is just a, a training blunt. Um, so this is called a long sword, except in Dungeons and Dragons, you call it a bastard sword. Um, and in Sword Chronicle, we also call it a bastard sword, even though bastard sword was an Elizabethan term and we're not 100% sure what it meant. Um, but yes, uh, nowadays in sort of modern historical fencing nomenclature, um, it's, it's a longer sword. Um, however, historically, uh, people did not, were not too exact about these things. Um, they just called them swords a lot of the time. Or sometimes they called them knives if they were single-edged. Um, so you have a lot of stuff like that. Now, getting beyond... Uh, my special nerdy interest. Um, the other big influence was, uh, I think, uh, in the Shattered Era setting, um, where um, one of the big influences was, uh, was the Crusades. And uh, we, in the past, there was a lot of thought about the Crusades as kind of a uh, singular series of historical events. Um, thought of more as, hmm, I don't know, I'm going to describe it in a different way. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the modern ideas about what the Crusades were um, now connected to colonialism. Um, and they consider the Crusades to be sort of the first, um, the first European external colonial project, right? Um, and of course, we know that, you know, colonialism is, you know, first of all, it's bad. Um, <laughs> In case you didn't know. Yeah. Colonialism so, is bad. Yeah. Um, going somewhere and saying you own it and establishing a nation on it is, is, is frowned upon um, by decent, decent modern people. Um, mm -hmm. So because of this, one of the things in the Shattered Era setting is that you have um, this big part of the world that was previously not attractive uh, to settlers, right? And that's because it was near a big terrifying magical wall that cut off part of the world, um, which had been assumed to have been overrun by monsters. Um, but then that wall disappeared um, and that region suddenly became very attractive. So consequently we have kind of a Crusader Kingdom sort of situation. Um, and I drew upon that as an influence um, where we have a whole bunch of people sort of trying to establish states and power bases um, in this one particular area. And it's an area with, you know, a deep history. And it also has, you know, people who already live there, right? Who are obviously being put upon by these invaders, right? So even though colonialism is bad, um, and the Crusades were bad. Uh, they are, in fact, you know, they are fertile sources of inspiration for dramatic conflict. Um, so consequently, for the Shattered Era setting, uh, that's kind of a touchstone. And one of the things I wanted to do, because those things have consequences that matter here and now, um, is to be very explicit about that inspiration and what it means. So that's in there. Now, when it comes to nuts and bolts, 
house design and things like that, uh, one of the things that's always going to happen is, well, um, you know, we talk about feudalism as this sort of monolithic, all encompassing thing, but really, and the book talks about, and um, Sword Chronicle talks about it, uh, it's just sort of a rough term for a lot of individual traditional arrangements that, um, you know, that existed um, after the decentralization breakup, whatever you want to call it, uh, of the Roman Empire, um, you know, and, and before the Renaissance and in during the Renaissance and so on and so forth. So to a certain extent, you kind of have to ignore history because you can't have a, you can't have a separate system for the form of, for the relationships that were traditional in medieval France. Right. Uh, <laughs> and a different one for the ones that were traditional in medieval England. Uh, yeah. Like, um, yeah. And there's a certain redemption of the material or it would all, it would be a lot of what dysentery and, and uh, rotten food. Well, <laughs> it's back and forth. I have a bone to pick with people talking about how the middle ages was just this, this terrible, um, everybody standing in each other's poop all the time. Right. Yeah. It, I don't you said this before. To... I don't know. No, actually, I, I'm baiting Malcolm to say this because we had this dialogue uh, yeah. in detail. So, I mean, I think it's fascinating and it gives some insight into the kind of work that you do when making these sort of, you know, uh, worlds for people or adjusting them to be more accessible as, you, as you've done. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that was a thing in Shattered Era too because um, one of the things uh, that, you know, um, Song of Ice and Fire leaned very heavily into heredity um, as, as a source of power, right? And yeah, that's historical, you know, how you were born was a big deal. Right. However, um, on Earth, in the Earth in which we live, there were also various arrangements that existed, um, you know, to facilitate things like adoption, um, to facilitate... Um, non-blood related sense. adults um you know controlling uh what in sword chronicle would be a house right in france you have uh which was essentially you know uh there is a back and forth argument about whether it was gay marriage um because it was a way uh it was a way of bringing um generally two adult men together um to manage a household um my opinion is that it was definitely not not gay marriage like <laughs> if you if you wanted to shack up with another aristocrat uh who was the same you know and you were a man and he was a man how else were you going to make it legal right um so there's actually a whole bunch of, there's a great deal of diversity in how things like succession worked, right? So a lot of Sword Chronicle, you know, it, you know, a lot of the framing text kind of opens up, you know, what it means to be descended from someone and what it means to have power in a household. And uh, Shattered Era it gets a little more explicit about that. And they say that, well, the, the cultures here have, you know, they have ways of, of bringing non-blood relations in um, or not using, um, you know, the sort of male first succession. Um, yeah. Right. And that's and great. Like that. And that's great. I think what's um, rewarding about that is that when you look at the kinds of people that play, it runs the gamut. It's, you know, uh, there are a lot of different people who enjoy tabletop role play games and the wider we can make that. Uh, the more accessible it is, and also the more reflective of reality, um, as we just learned. I, I have a question for you. If you, uh, if the two of you don't mind, maybe some nuts and boltsy kinds of stuff. Um, sure. There is a question as I scroll back. Um, uh, oh, also very, very quickly, Jay Gray. Uh, again, you are the Link Wizard, and thank you so much for taking the barrage of my links I'm sending your way, but you are doing phenomenal. And Adam Forrest says that is a thoughtful and generous answer. Thank you all. Um, I wanted- Thanks for the question. Yeah, really, really, really great question. Mm -hmm. um, very evocative. 
so Jordan uh, Moten says, I picked up the Sword Chronicle PDF. Any news on when a POD version will be available? Oh, ah, thank you this, for that I, question I, that we wanted to answer if nobody yes. else asked it. <laughs> so um, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, actually, Will, do you want to take this? Yeah, Since let me There's let an me operational do side. Yeah, so um, the, the, there is POD coming. Like, let's get that out of the way first and foremost is POD is coming um, and it is coming soon TM. Um, and the reason that it's coming soon is that um, there are some production and operation side things that need to happen um, before we pull the trigger on letting everyone get um, the POD. Um, and that is like, um, you know, sizing to fit um, in, in certain dimensions, um, which is slightly different than a PDF. Um, and wrap around cover. Wrap around cover, uh, coloration, like all of those kinds of things uh, need to be like checked before we can pull the trigger. Um, and that is sometimes a process um, because we have to have our production team put in hours uh, doing those things and then getting uh, samples from uh, drive through RPG uh, to approve them. Um, so we're, we are working on that. Um, it is going a little bit slower than I think everyone over here wants. <laughs> but it's um, top of mind, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah but it is, yeah, it's something about that it we're, today. yeah, it is something that we actively talk about um, and have talked about for the last couple of days, actually, ever since we pulled the trigger on um, releasing uh, Sword Chronicle. Um, the other thing is so that uh, there were a couple uh, questions like this on the drive through RPG that I think Malcolm saw and mm -hmm. some that I saw on Twitter. And um, that is like, what are those PODs? And uh, like, will there be incentives? And I think the, the answer to that is that we have um, a program that we're putting into place so that early adopters of the PDF, so if you're buying it now or in the near future, um, you'll be sent a, a coupon uh, to get the uh, POD at a discount. Um, we're still working out some of the finer details on what that's going to look like. Um, but uh, to run you through, you will have options when the POD comes. Um, it is... Um, you know what, let me not lie to you and let me pull this up real quick so that I, I'm looking at it in front of me. That's to your question, Jay Gray, while he, uh, Will's pulling up his uh, information, mm -hmm. absolutely making considerations for early adopters. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we love it, it fine and want to, yeah. Yeah, we're figuring, we're just figuring out how to do it right. Um, yep. Yeah, it, how to do it right and also that like these things take time because they are in print Right, so we're at the whim of the printer and at the whim of shipping and you know all that chaotic. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, go ahead, Will. Sorry. <laughs> so um, the the three options that you'll have when the POD goes up is um, black and white soft cover, um, color soft cover, and a color hard cover. Um, and this is a conversation that Malcolm and I kind of had in depth about. Mm -hmm. Um, what options we wanted people to have, because if you if you go through drive through RPG RPGs um, pod uh, system, there are a bunch of different options, um, and we both agreed that you know there are some people who are just going to want a print reference, and so they don't mind it being in black and white. Mm -hmm. But there are other people who, and I love um, Malcolm used this word in our conversation. They want an artifact. Right, they want something right. to put on their shelves, and they want it. Well, to I'm one nice. of those people, right? So, right, and so um, that's kind of how we came to the soft cover black and white and the hard cover uh, color, um, and then the soft cover color was just kind of this like that's that seems to be the standard, uh, right? Like, and it's a comfy middle ground, um, and so um, when the POD goes up. Um, all three of those uh, options will be available for you to, to buy. Um, and then if you're buying the PDF now, um, 
and we haven't decided on a hard cutoff date, but it's probably like if you buy it this week or next week, um, you will receive a coupon um, for a discount uh, on whichever of those POD options that you want. What I like about this is that, uh, Will, you're leaning into several, several years of in the trenches experience as far as, you know, the products uh, to be provided as well as feedback mm -hmm. and stuff. But I, I believe, we're, I'm sorry, uh, one, one quick sec. Um, but well, I believe that we're even getting together in the not too distant future to nail down these details very clearly. And we'll share more details when they're available. Yeah. Th so yeah, a lot of this, so this kind of goes back to like, uh, printing takes time and shipping takes time. And so because of those kinds of things, um, we need to nail down um, how much this costs and that kind of dictates um, how much we're gonna charge for these PODs and that dictates how much we want to offer on the coupon. And those are things that we're actively working out, um, but we're not ready to like, pull the trigger on those numbers quite yet yeah yeah i, I want to add well, just well i want to just tie it up and then i'll hand it to you malcolm but i just want to say um folks one of the most uh, important ways when we talk about uh communicating and sharing details and keeping you abreast of our um uh, momentum and when we make these kinds of decisions or when we provide those coupons um when we've got that system sorted out is that we're able to reach you via email that's what i was through. gonna say you almost like a customer service emails. communications thing absolutely yeah so oh yeah it's so funny yeah malcolm and i were in the same spot so know that <laughs> if you're not accepting emails through the drive through rpg system uh i get it um a lot of noise but there, we will be using that to distribute um, coupons to you. So be be aware. Um, uh, another piece of the drive through RPG thing I wanted to uh, ask and sort of say, you know, as we move through this, um, you know, uh, there's going to be, you know, errata to share and some of that kind of stuff as we move forward. Uh, what can folks expect? the cadence for like, you know, uh, updates to core stuff. Is that something that happens sort of on a, as it, as it is compiled? I am currently collecting, um, if you, if you go to ad and you go to a uh, channel called this looks weird, <laughs> um, there will be a link to a spreadsheet. And if you notice something that looks weird in one of our books, not just sword chronicle, um, make an entry on that spreadsheet. Absolutely. I'm going to share this link with uh, the link wizard so that uh, he can then share uh, it with you. Uh, I really want to encourage folks who may be feeling uh, maybe the initial response that they want to kind of go to 10 and just get furious. I just know that we're, we're there. We're, we're with you. We're listening. We're listening. We're, we're grabbing the, we're grabbing the details of making that work for you. Um, you know, the joy to which we do it, um, it will be done, uh, is certainly dependent on, upon now, you know, I, your I personally um, am going to, the day that I have set aside for compiling a bunch of these is next Monday. So if people are very eager um, to, to share with me anything they think that looks weird in Sword Chronicle, um, this week is a good time. It is um, uh, the form itself is called the the Weird Hunters Society. <laughs> <laughs> ah, whoever did that's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm sharing that link with uh, Jay Gray now to distribute, as he is wont to do. Um, but yeah, awesome. Thanks, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just going to repeat what Troy was saying because the thing is the reason I brought up the because. Um, about make sure you can get emails from us, right? And not just through drive through, right? Like if you get stuff, it's because sometimes we have had situations where we've had updates to things or offers and things like that. And not just, you know, this email is about our desire to sell you things, though certain emails will. We are a business. Yeah, because we are, we are a business. Yeah. But, you know, when we have, when we have, when we want to push updates and things like that, like sometimes people don't get the message because they've turned the emails off. 
um, right. and it is something we've talked about internally. So, um, yeah, so, so work yeah. with us and we'll work with you for sure. Um, we try not to be too egregious about the things that uh, the emails and notifications that we send out, but we also, um, as Malcolm said, you know, we're a, a commercial enterprise. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, to feed ourselves. Yeah, and make fun yeah. games. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like we're, we're good to, to start uh, ending this unless there are other questions, Troy. No, we've got them. And, and thank you both for, for uh, um, grabbing them as they came and, and uh, tackling them. Uh, some really great stuff coming. And also, rest assured, folks, we hear you and we see you. And uh, we put together the resources to gather your, your feedback and include it moving forward. Um, you know what I would like to see at some point? Because I have not, I didn't get into um, the Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, I want to, can we play? Can we put something together? Like maybe, you know, check out some of the, I don't know, some of the content that folks have made. I mean, it just seems like mm. there's a lot of opportunity. We should do that in the future, huh? That's not I, a bad idea. I, I would be down for that. And we could make Warfare Wednesday a, uh, a thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Let's I also talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll plan it for sure. I don't know. You know, maybe weekly is a little aggressive, um, but regularly. Mm -hmm. Maybe we even invite a, a, a you know, a person who has uh, created something uh, to supplement the work that's out there um, from our, uh, from the guild. Uh, but yeah, make sure you check out, um, we've got like disposition cards from Studio 404 Games and we've got future is, oh yeah, we've got tons. I mean, there's, there is some really great stuff here. Um, I'd just love to kind of, get into it and and learn it um yeah, yeah. so right um before we close um the door on this um i'd like to just take a moment and say if you don't know um we we have a bunch of games and so uh for the past i don't know how many years we've kind of been known for age right that's kind of been uh, a big deal for us. Um, and so dipping our toe back into Chronicle, like Malcolm said earlier, has been really interesting and creative um, and has opened eyes as far as like design design space has goes. Yeah. Um, but we do have a bunch of other age games. And if you don't know, right now we are running a Kickstarter for one of those uh, for The Expanse that has D6s. Um, it is a Kickstarter just for dice um, that are themed for the Expanse, and D6s are what you use for Chronicle. So if you want to have cool Expanse-themed dice for your uh, Sword Chronicle game, go check out that Kickstarter also. Absolutely. We'll provide a link to that. Um, that was uh... a tortured segue, Will, but I respect it. It, yeah, it got yeah. there. <laughs> it did. No, it got there. No, it was good. It was good. I uh, much respect. Um, we'll share that. Um, you know, uh, I'm looking at it now. Wow, this is uh, this is fun. Yeah, this we, is exciting. Yeah, we uh, we're we're close to seventeen thousand dollars, which um, we funded in our first day um, for ten thousand dollars, and we have a stretch goal um, that are cool, futuristic, um, proto gen. Uh, themed dice from the expanse um so help us get there um so that you can get other cool dice absolutely hey you two um thank you hey friends who uh hung out with us through this i uh, really truly appreciated uh this of course is going to be hanging out on uh facebook uh you'll be able to kind of see the raw unedited uh, but we're also packaging this up and we're going to put it on our YouTube channel which you'll find a green ronin i think it's just green ronin um and uh, we've got all kinds of reviews and i mean 20 years of gaming uh creating games in the space I, I believe that that's almost before the internet um if i'm doing my math right but um but lots of you're, great stuff in the archive respectfully you're you're not you're not <laughs> <laughs> i'm not what? 20 years is a long time it is a yeah. long time but uh uh point being sure. we started doing some of this stuff before certainly 
um, many of the kind of web resources and things oh, were, yeah. Yeah. you know, up and up and uh, running. But it's a it's a lot of great stuff to check out there. Of course, our live streams for Mutants and Masterminds Monday. We do a Fiction Friday every once in a while. We're gonna you know explore the uh, Warfare uh, Wednesday. Well, you know, what else do you want to see? Do you want to hang out and we can play games? Um, you know, uh, we're we're twenty years old. We're ready to party. I also developed Modern Age, by the way. It's a fine game. It's which is also game. age. Which it is, is also Seg age. Segway. Nailed Boom. it. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. Thanks, everybody. Uh, any final words, friends, uh, from the two of you? I think I'm good. Thank you all for supporting us and check out Sword Chronicle. If you haven't already, um, I just checked again. Third day, we're still number one on Drive Through RPG. Number one, number one. Um, thank you, everybody, for your support. Thanks for people who've gotten into the game before and who are getting into it now. And tell us what you do with it. Yeah. Because we want to hear all about it. We want to hear about your games. Um, we want to hear about your streams. Uh, we'll we want to go to one of Yeah, yeah. We yeah. want to share them with the world. Tell me jokes on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good, too. He needs them. <laughs> he, he needs help. I need help. <laughs> I need help on Twitter. All right, my <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please, anything. It's such a mean place. Uh, all right. Well, you know, Twitter is running. known for its, it, it, its calm absolutely soothing um soothing yeah, uh -huh. yeah it's a place of peace and uh inspiration for sure yeah. all right Michael all right i'm gonna cut us all off right. here i'm gonna thank everybody for checking us out we will talk to you soon uh have a great rest of your week ciao goodbye, goodbye take now. care